Good morning, everyone. It's Bob Branch with another edition of the Daily Devo. I want to welcome you again into the Lord's presence and into our discussion. Yesterday, I talked about this idea of, of feeling out of control and and what our responses are and our reactions are to feeling out of control. Now, Jesus actually addresses some of these things in a fairly simple and straightforward way in terms of what we, what's going on you know, inside of us. One of the ways that we can understand what's going on inside of us is by what comes out of us. And that is simply what ends up coming out of us in terms of what we say and our self-talk and our talk to others and the different things that we talk about, the different things that we're interested in, but in particular, the things that come out of our mouths. And so the Lord said it this way in Luke 6, 45, he said, the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Or some of the older translations would say it this way, out of the overflow of the mouth, the heart speaks. So you find out kind of what's going on inside of your heart by what's coming out of your mouth. And so I find this curious because I, as I'm talking with different people, uh, I find that there's all of this, uh, there's all this angst and anger and frustration that's coming out. I find that there's actually a bit of an edge to people that there wasn't before, that there's a, a bitterness and, and all of these different things. And I think it's easy to blame the pandemic, but the pandemic isn't the culprit of this whole thing. It's something that's coming from the pandemic. And I, again, I believe that it is our, our lack of the sense of control. And because we as Americans, we've experienced a sense of control for a good long time. We've had a long run, several hundred years at least of that. And so we're used to having our freedoms and these things are encroaching on our freedoms and it's pretty uncomfortable. It's pretty frustrating, but you put six months on that, which we've got just about right now. You got six months of that kind of stuff and now people are pretty frustrated. People are pretty, they, they feel inconvenienced. They feel angry. They feel like you can't tell me what to do. And I find these different kind of attitudes, quite frankly, everywhere. So uh, we feel out of control. We feel inconvenienced. There's attitudes that come from that. And as I said uh, a couple of days ago, that we had, that, that we had, and perhaps that in the midst of this whole thing, in the, in the midst of feeling out of control, that we miss the grace of God, that somehow that just goes beyond us. And we, because we miss it, because we've not come back to the cross, because we've not come back to grace and lived in God's generosity and his love, because of that, what ends up happening is we could get real what I call judgy. Uh, I never used that word before until this pandemic season, but judgy is kind of an interesting word that, that we get real judgmental toward people and toward ideas and toward politics and toward politicians and toward, toward other Christians who don't take the same opinions. Anybody that doesn't take the same opinions that we do, because obviously the opinions that we have about everything are the right opinions because nobody picks the second best opinion. That's the way it is. It's that way with theology. It's that way with, with worship. It's that way. Nobody picks the second best way of thinking about something. Thing, and they pick the best way that they perceive it is. It doesn't matter if it is or not. It, it's what they have chosen. And that's the way that it is for you and me. So we get judgy, we get critical, we get embittered, we get divided, we get opinionated, all these different things. And I want to say, when you get Christians in that kind of space, my word to that is, yikes, ah, that is not the place that God wants any of us. But what's ended up happening is, I think that this season has flushed some things out inside of us that the Lord says, hey, I wanna, I wanna work with you. I wanna work you out of that. So would you let me work with you out of that? So if you get real judgy, if you've noticed yourself real judgy or some other people that are in your world that have become real judgy, real critical, real opinionated, real divided, real embittered, real, all of those different things. It, if they're Christians, they're missing grace. It's a pretty much a guarantee that if you are judgy, if you are critical, if you're all these things that are not gracious, you're missing grace. So remember the, the Ephesians 12, 15 verse that we talked about two days ago, you know, see to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up uh, among you and defiles, that causes trouble and defiles many. You miss grace. Bitterness has then a chance to backfill the place where we missed grace. So what do you do? What do you do if you you are, are missing grace? Well, let me make a couple of suggestions. Firstly, I want to say that you got to come back to grace, and that is always that always means humbling ourselves. That we humble ourselves, we humble ourselves before God, and we we tell the Lord, Lord, I've I've sinned. I I've, I've missed it. I've become hard. I've become divided. I've become opinionated and all these things. And I want to figure out all these different ways of justifying it. But none of these things you're co-signing. 
And so we must come back to grace. Secondly, and, and we, we do that by coming back to the Lord and his generosity toward us. And I think that the Lord is certainly, he's not like, bad dog, no, no, you know, get down and give me 25. Instead, he's saying, this is breaking my heart. Would you come to me? And when you come to somebody whose heart is broken because of the attitude that you and others have had, it breaks your heart too. And you come back to grace. You come back to love. Secondly, I want to say that I think that part of the solution in this whole thing too is that when we get sort of uh, cattywampus, we get upside down, we get um, just in a goofy and uh, upside down way spiritually in this whole thing, we need to forgive. We need to forgive the people that don't think like we do. We need to forgive the people that are saying things that, that we take personally and that have hurt us. And I think that what's interesting is that if somebody else holds a different idea than you do about something, a lot of people times people are taking these things personally and they're it's like well you hold a different idea than i do and so therefore you hate me it's like no i just have a different idea about these things and a different way of looking at this than you do and but the the solution for us still is going to be coming back to that that deep well of forgiveness that if we want to experience god's forgiveness and the flushing power and the cleansing power of his forgiveness we must forgive jesus is very clear about this there's nothing ambiguous at all about it so we forgive Thirdly, I think that we need to start thanking God and worshiping God again. So I want to encourage you, grab a good playlist, get on Pandora or uh, some of these different services that have um, different kinds of worship playlists or just create one on YouTube or something like that. But start worshiping and start thanking God and let that let that put the Lord front and center more and more. I believe that the Lord will melt you as you do this and and you'll you'll find that equilibrium will come back into your world as you do these things. And then I would also say get back with people because I think one of these things that ends up happening is we get real judgy. We only want to be around people that think like we do. And and I think that that's a giant mistake. So in that, get around people, be able to, to love them, think about them, ask them how they're doing, get outside of ourselves, love others as you love each other well, then you will start to find an equilibrium again. And then I would also say just in that same thing as, as generosity in, thankfulness and gratitude, you know, generosity in, gratitude around, and generosity out, then let that be the ethic that you interact with your world. Generosity in, generosity from God, um, gratitude inside, generosity out. As you do these things, I think you'll find that your equilibrium will return to you and you won't be trying to find different ways that you can feel less out of control, but instead you could say, Lord, I believe that you are still on the throne, that you still are ruling and reigning in your universe, and that I trust you in the midst of what's going on, even if I don't like it, even if I feel like I have less control than I'm used to, still can trust you, and I do. With that said, um, I'm praying for you, and I love you, and I'm so grateful that you're walking with me in this, and that I get to walk with you in this. I look forward to being able to discuss and to ponder these different things more with you as we go forward. Thanks so much for tuning in, and have a terrific weekend.